Changing the definition of marriage and what it really means, I'm Brian Lilly with the Rebel.media. So the Supreme Court of the United States has changed the definition of marriage. Gays and lesbians have a constitutional right to marriage, according to the 5-4 decision. So what does this mean going forward? I mean, yes, people are going to be able to get married now, but does it change a whole lot? If you listen to the supporters of same-sex marriage, then you're being told this is all about making sure that people can love whoever they want. We've heard that from Hillary Clinton. We've heard it from Barack Obama countless times. Just after the ruling came out, Barack Obama sent out this tweet. All people should be treated equally regardless of who they are or who they love. President Obama, hashtag love wins. Look, if that's what this were all about and nothing more, then fine, that would be it. You're changing the definition of marriage and some words change on a paper, but this is about so much more. Now, I know some people say that's enough. You shouldn't change the definition of marriage, but you know what? It's done now. You're not putting the genie back in the bottle, and this fight was lost a long time ago. It was just a matter of when the Supreme Court was going to do this. But what does it mean going forward? What does it mean tomorrow? next week, next month, next year, or a decade from now? Well, as someone that lives in Canada where we legalized same-sex marriage a decade ago in 2005, let me give you some knowledge from our experience. What will change? Well, first off, you're going to have laws changed. Uh, There were countless laws that had to be changed at the federal, provincial, local level to remove terms such as husband and wife. That's going to be a massive undertaking to rewrite all those laws. And trust me, they will be rewritten. People will demand that terms like husband and wife are taken out because, well, that is discriminatory. And you've got to just have spouse or another nonspecific gender neutral term. You're going to see laws change to remove terms such as natural parent. This is a term often found in law. And when we change the law regarding marriage, Well, natural parent had to be removed. It was substituted with legal parent. You could see birth certificates change. Some jurisdictions have already done this to get rid of mother and father, and instead you've got parent one and parent two. That's a small change perhaps, but a meaningful one. Your kid's school curriculum, if it hasn't already changed to discuss different types of families, it will now. But what else is going to happen? Well, let me tell you. For the majority of gays and lesbians, I don't think this ruling is about anything more than they get to marry. But then there's the activists, gay and lesbian activists, but also activists on the left who will use this ruling to continue furthering an agenda. Most people are just going to say, all right, and go about their daily lives after this. But the the activists will use this to push for more. What are they going to push for? Well, let me give you a couple of examples. 2005, shortly after the same-sex marriage ruling in Canada, a couple of lesbians, Tracy Smith and Deborah Chimson, won a BC Human Rights Tribunal decision because they said they were discriminated against by the Knights of Columbus near British, uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. They wanted to host their wedding reception at the Knights of Columbus Hall. Now, if you're not familiar with the Knights of Columbus, it is the world's largest fraternal Catholic organization. It has about two million members. Full disclosure, myself among them. They do charitable work, they do local work, they do all kinds of things in their communities, but they are a Catholic organization. And this couple was upset that the Knights said, no, we can't let you rent our hall for a lesbian wedding. It goes against church teachings. Well, that was seen as discriminatory, especially since they didn't spend enough time being polite to them and helping them find a new hall. So they were fined $1,000 for not renting the hall to this couple. Let me tell you, that put a chill on church hall rentals and Knights of Columbus hall rentals, and you'll see challenges like this happen over the coming years. But then there's the bigger, more worrisome challenges. Uh, I want to point you to a story uh, about a university, Trinity Western University. It's an evangelical school that's been operating for decades, again, near Vancouver. Both these stories tie into Vancouver, but Trinity Western is an evangelical school. They fought years ago to get a teacher's college, and at that point, in the early 2000s, teachers' accreditation body said, no, no, we don't want an evangelical school having a teacher's college, but they fought. They took the case all the way to the Supreme Court, and they won. 
Now, that was before the definition of marriage changed. Now, Trinity Western University is trying to start a law school, a Christian law school. They were approved by the British Columbia education authorities that said, yep, you meet our, our level of academic rigor, you can start a law school. But then they needed to get permission from the different law societies, the bar associations, that their students would be allowed to article, to be called to the bar. Well, the law society said no. Across the country, they started to say no. Why? Because Trinity Western University asks its students to sign what's called a community covenant. This is a document that says they will behave in a certain way. They will refrain from gossiping, lying, cheating, stealing, and that they will refrain from sex outside of the bounds of marriage. How does the school define marriage? In a Christian way, as between one man and one woman. That is deemed discriminatory enough to say this school cannot have a law school, that they're not of the right mindset to run a law school, even for Christian students. So they've been denied in Nova Scotia, in Ontario, in British Columbia. They have had the law societies at the local level say no. So they've taken them to court. Outside of these decisions, you've got activists like Richard Elliott of the HIV AIDS Legal Network saying, these guys shouldn't be allowed anywhere near a law school. The concern has been raised by the Canadian Council of Law Deans, by a number of committees within the Canadian Bar Association, uh, and by other legal academics and commentators to question whether or not the students that are trained at a law school that overtly discriminates and requires all of its students to overtly affirm discrimination, contrary to the basic law of the land, meet the standards for being qualified to practice law in Canada. And I think that there's a very real question as to whether they do, and I would suggest they don't. That was Elliot speaking to Extra. It's a, a gay and lesbian uh, news outlet, an activist news outlet. I have no problems with activist news outlets. Look, I belong to an activist news outlet. I do opinion journalism. But that's the, the activist minority that I was telling you about. Like I said, most gays and lesbians, they don't have a dog in this fight and are probably willing to say live and let live. I'm not going to go to that school anyway. But there is the minority of people that will say, no, we will bring our orthodoxy and impose it on you. These are the new heresy trials that will be happening in the United States over the coming de uh, years and even decades. It's what we've been dealing with for the last 10 years. Uh, it's not all going to be gay and lesbian activists. As I said, there will be people on the left and then there will be the media. Take a look at this headline in the Globe and Mail. This is uh, Canada's alleged newspaper of record. This is Canada's alleged version of the New York Times. BC Fundamentalist University to Challenge Ontario Law Society Decision. Just the use of that in a headline fundamentalist is thrown around in a derogatory, divisive manner. It is meant to pinpoint that these, you know, these people. The media and these activists are going to spend the next several years in America pushing for change, pushing for litigation that has nothing to do with whether two people can marry, but will be about enforcing the new orthodoxy. As I said, these are the new heresy trials, the new dogma will be determined not by a religious body, but by the courts and by the activists. Anyone that says that this decision from the Supreme Court is just about letting two people love is either ignorant, willfully blind, or maybe an activist themselves, hoping you won't notice what's coming.